I see uh, Mr Seymour is with us now, not in the flat kitchen, but in his office by the looks of things. Uh, David, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. All right. Look, I, I want to uh, concentrate first on, on the conference you had uh, over the weekend, um, which seemed to me, and I certainly heard from people who were there and I saw on social media, um, it was a pretty buzzy affair. And Paul Henry, my old colleague and old media person, made quite the impact. Yeah, no, he gave a tremendous speech and uh, the event overall, uh, you know, coming off the back of an election, usually things get a bit quiet. And to be honest, I was a bit worried, you know, can we, we booked a venue of 550 people, can we sell it out? Um, well, it turns out uh, we can. Uh, people bought tickets for 50 bucks each and uh, the energy was really, really palpable. So uh, for that, uh, we're really grateful. And uh, I think it uh, is a sign of good things to come for ACT, but more importantly, for people who believe in making change in this country, uh, you know, we're just getting started. All right. Um, it would be fair to say, though, David, that perhaps, though you are in government, um, there has been a change in government, uh, a general feeling ACT might have done a little bit better at the, at, at the election. Was there any, if you like, post-mortem on that, any reflection on that at the conference? Well, I mean, let, let's just first of all think about what you've just said. Um, for years, uh, people told me that, you know, ACT was going nowhere and couldn't get more MPs. And, and then we have a record result, get into Cabinet, get a huge agenda uh, in coalition agreements. I, I think it's fair to say that this government is the most reformist we've seen in 30 years. It's, it's not like the years of uh, John Key where basically they got in and pretty much continued. Yeah, but was the there a feeling at the conference that you could government. have done better? You could have got more votes? Well, I, I think I'm answering that. The, the, the answer is, well, no, there, there wasn't. Um, of course, everyone will always say, we wish we'd done better, we wish we'd got 100%, um, but actually it was a record result, so that's the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is, you know, we're a professional party. We've gone from being a, a small insurgent group to what I would describe as a small big party, and, yeah, we put significant resource. You know, we spent quite a lot of money getting a professional to interview 61 people involved in the campaign, uh, wrote a pretty substantial report, and uh, we'll take things out of that that mean we'll run a better campaign next time. So that's all, you know, par for the course. Uh, and um, I think based on the momentum that we're feeling now, uh, it's in a very, very good position. Uh, it looks to me too like the party has got a couple of, and this happens after every campaign, um, a couple of malcontents who appear to be doing a pretty rudimentary sort of Me Too campaign on, on the party. Any comment on that? Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't make that uh, comparison. It's it's nothing like that. Uh, second of all, yeah, I mean, look, ACT is a party that's grown literally a thousand percent. If you go from one to 11, uh, then that's a thousand percent. And that's not just MPs, that's the people voting for us. Uh, it's the people donating, it's the people joining the party, it's the activists. You know, five years ago, um, the ACT Party organisation didn't really exist outside of the um, wonderful, I have to say, Epsom Electorate Committee. Uh, now it has groups of people up and down the country who are campaigning for ACT. So, you know, with all of that growth, uh, inevitably, a whole lot of people come along to an election, they're really excited. Uh, and sometimes they find out that politics wasn't quite what they thought or they didn't get ranked as highly on the list or whatever. It just didn't quite work out the way they hoped. And that's understandable. That's life. Um, it's a little bit like the tide. Uh, some people uh, come in, then they go out, um, but others stick around. I, I, I volunteered a, a little bit in the 2002 campaign because I just wondered what it would be like. Um, and eight campaigns later, here I am. I'm, I'm one of the people that came in with the tide and stayed. Okay, so if you like schism, discontent, that is part of growth, isn't it, as you're organised? And it's a challenge uh, for any political or any other organisation that growth increases risk. Well, I, I wouldn't, I don't even think it's, you know, it's been cast in pretty negative terms even by you just now. Um, I would say that actually overwhelmingly uh, you've got more and more people involved got a huge number of people who are positive, um, but just for some strange reason, um, you, you know, you don't really see 
uh, media writing stories about the um, you, you know wonderful experience that many people have had and how they've enjoyed campaigning with Acton planning uh, to campaign again with us. Uh, there's many people like that, but for some strange reason, they, they don't seem to make the press. Mm. I did get a text in before it said, please ask David, how do you avoid uh, your brand or your political delineation being diluted by being part of a coalition government? And could you tell me, as of today, what are the issues you think which Act still stands alone or leads the pack on in terms of policy positions and advocacy? Well, where to start? I mean, first of all, on this issue of how are we going to go forward after 40 years of the treaty being interpreted as a partnership? Um, the only way to do that is for Parliament to return to the fray and have a debate and say, well, actually, uh, we think when the treaty was signed it meant this, not the way it's been interpreted by the tribunal and the courts and the public service as a partnership between races. It's a compact. Uh, that means all people live together and uh, with the same basic human rights and dignity in New Zealand. Now, you know, only ACT is clearly articulating that in a positive way of here's how we can go forward and here's the steps we can take. Uh, similarly, you know, delivering public services on need not race. So on that issue, uh, it's ACT that actually has a, a constructive way of how are we going to go forward. Uh, when it comes to the amount of red tape and regulation, I think in a way, uh, while I'm very worried about government tax and government waste, it's all the rules and restrictions they put on the property they haven't taxed on you uh, that is slowing New Zealand down, not just economically, but crushing the spirit of our country, which is people that came to these shores with hope for a better tomorrow were prepared to make their own luck and do it their way. Um, that has really, I think, been eroded. And now, basically, we live in fear of, of compliance activities. And again, you know, it's ACT that is taking the lead um, on making sure that we actually get stuck into red tape and regulation. Uh, starting with early childhood education, we'll have uh, more to announce even this week on how we're going about that particular task. Um, and then you get to this question of education. Uh, the only way that we're going to ensure that the next generation is free to learn in a way that engages them, but is also free of other people's political agendas, is to say, actually, here's your money as a student. You can take it to a school of your choice. Uh, and that's what the charter school movement is about. So um, there's three issues that, that come up straight off the bat. Um, you know, the, the meaning of our treaty, uh, the way that we deal with red tape and regulation and the way that we provide education for the next generation. And each of those act has, first of all, really clear, distinct positions. But second of all, uh, positions that are supported by the government, maybe not going as far as we would like. Um, that's, that's understandable as three parties in a coalition, no one gets everything they want. However, um, I think it's fair to say that they wouldn't be going nearly as far on those and many other issues uh, were it not for ACT. All right. Last week when we spoke, you, you expressed quite serious concern about the, well, uh, the brouhaha around uh, the Marae and the Māori Party and Te Whanau Ora and, and what had gone down in, in Manurewa. Uh, we have the Prime Minister yesterday, I presume, after a Cabinet discussion that you took part in, saying there is going to be uh, an inquiry. Do you think that is the appropriate response do you think it represents the gravitas or reflects the gravity of what is going on? 